Good morning. Hello from Bryson City. It's time for another art lesson. Um, so today we are going to be doing Vanishing Points 2. Uh, I realized yesterday after we got into the lesson, we only did single point perspective. So today we're going to work. Ta-da! Hey guys. Betsy's going to um, uh, work along with us and see what we can come up with. So for this lesson today, you'll need a straight edge. It can be a ruler or it can even be a paint stick of wood. Stick. Look, I have a paint stick from here. From what? From, uh, yeah, I can't, I can't say where it's from. If they gave me more free paint sticks, I could say where it was from. Um, Got to sponsor my video. <laughs> <laughs> but um, you can use a straight edge or ruler. Um, any of that would be fine. Um, you'll need a, you know, your pad. Of also, these are a paper board and a yardstick. You can do them really big too. Um, don't be. Don't think you have to do them on a little sheet of paper. You know, don't be constrained by this. If you have a bigger sheet of paper or a poster board or even cardboard you could draw on that so or like this yep i have so a notebook got, i have like this old notebook yep that I got you got your Christmas. sketch pad these so, work really good for drawing get you a stock of those <laughs> <laughs> good to have drawing <laughs> pads just sitting around so when the, when the urge hits you you can draw but, um, yeah, if you've never tried purchasing rolled paper, rolled paper is awesome. Um, you can usually get in width from anywhere from 28 to up to 48 inches wide up to um, 10 yards, 30 feet. So you can do a, if you wanted to, if you want to be that adventurous, you can do a 30 foot drawing. That's up to you. But uh, so today, let me flip the camera around here. So here's our drawing from yesterday. Here's Betsy's paper. She's going to follow along with us. I'm just drawing something in my imagination. That's what all of you guys could do. All right. I have found my old school bag of pencils, and I have a new tool for you guys. If you ever find one of these, this... No, it's not, it's not a holder for um, cigarettes. <laughs> I know somebody's going to look at that and go, that's what this is. This is a pencil extender. So look at that little bitty pencil, how hard that would be to hold. So you put that little bit of a pencil in here. Push the ring down. And now you have a... Full size. All right. So we're going to today... I'm going to start off by drawing a horizon line like I did yesterday. I'm going to put it in about the middle of the paper. So. Okay. Yep, so draw your horizon line. Let's see. Betsy's drawing hers. Oh, you got to hold that ruler down. <laughs> You're her, you have a plateau off in your horizon. I'll just draw the sun there. I'll just draw the sun in <laughs> you that can't, area. You can't. So you for two-point perspective, <laughs> I'm going to put one perspective here. Mm, I'm going to put another perspective point here. So I'm to start off with, though. again, I'm going to do the road. Now when I draw the road, see if I drew it over here and try to draw this flat, flat as possible. It came to the point. Wait, now, literally, it's like our viewpoint's going to be like we're sitting on top of a ladder with our sketch draw. pads drawing um, drawing this stuff. So there, there we are sitting on top of our ladder. Um, so it's going to make your perspective feel like you're higher up. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start here. I'm going to come in, first line, 
I'm going to keep these lines kind of tight together because I want to try and get a lot of information in our drawing today. So there's one. I'm going to draw a highway. Go ahead. You got to... So here, let's look at Betsy's. So when you draw from your perspective points, okay. you need to connect them all the way back to the horizon, okay? Okay. Here. So on this one, I'm going to intersect the crossroads. I'm going to make it look like it's very far away. Like it's so there's our intersection. Got my eraser handy. So we'll do a little bit of quick erasing. Oh, dang, I messed up. There's your eraser. There's the intersection. So, major quick. Sorry, more really quick. Area for a little bit of like a sidewalk. Just like that. The same thing here. Make sure our lines connect. Now, this is the interesting part of doing this uh, sidewalk. So, you know, the sidewalk has those cracks in it, right? So all the cracks on this side line up to this vanishing point. All the seams on this side line up to that vanishing point. So it looks something like this. So it take you a little while to sit sit down and do all these little marks. But all the vanishing points will match up, and it'll look really cool. Again, if you're using pins, uh, permanent permanent pins, or uh, very nice um, graphic pins, you can go back later. Right here now, right on this corner, right on our intersection, I'm going to line up where these with these two corners here. Let's go a little bit. We're going to draw a big building. So there's our first corner of the big building. And then I'm going to draw from the base back to this vanishing point. For the base back to this vanishing point. Now, some more parallel lines going up. As you can see, I made them a little shorter because the top of the building will now go back to that vanishing point as well. So, here's lined up with the vanishing point, intersecting with the top, also intersecting. Do a little racing here. So you can't see the horizon line through the building. Well, you could if it was a transparent building. All glass, right?
Okay, so there's our building. Now we're going to put in some rows of windows. Line up with our vanishing point. We'll start off first rows here. Then here. Just keep sliding it up. Try and keep it. I'll keep it on your edge of the top here. Um, top of the building. Now we're going to come through and do our windows. If any of you have a drawing table or drafting board and a T-square, Keeping it straight, uh, parallel, perpendicular on your paper just became a whole lot easier. I don't have a drafting table or a piece I'm freehanding this as much as possible. I'm sure if my um, high school drafting teacher, Varnell Cochran, was watching this, he'd probably say something to the effect of, Marley, what are you doing? Can't freehand that. <laughs> so as you go through just make sure as you as you go back on the side of the building the windows are going to become more and more narrow so <clears throat> one last little one right here Also, if you want to put lettering, notice that the building is going this way, so the letters are going to be bigger at this end, going that way. So, uh, let's say, um, let's say there's a sign on the side of this. So, I'm going to freehand these, but I'm using the top of the windows here and the top of the building as my guideline. So, matter of fact. I'll put a second one in just to just to help me out a little bit. Just a light mark. That's where the top of the text should go. And another light mark. That's where the bottom of the text should, should go. So now I have some more guidelines. So we'll letter our text in here. The A. This is. My C looks a little off, but that's okay. I'm going to smoosh it in on the M here. I'm 
almost forgot. Again, I like to break those rules, so I almost forgot. But if the letters are going to be three-dimensional, I need to go back in space to the second vanishing point. Just like this. Not lost in space, back in space. How many of you remember that old TV show? Lost in Space with Dr. Smith. I did a reboot a few years ago. It was actually pretty cool. I watched a couple episodes. Just too busy to watch a whole lot of TV, but it was good. Alright, so there's a letter. Uh, whenever you're drawing these perspectives like this, you can also do um, a row of trees. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start... Um, actually, I'm going to do the row of trees out in front of the building over this way. So we're going to put a tree here and put a tree here. So they match up with the other vanishing point. But the part of this that's interesting with the trees, you can freehand those. So we'll put a tree like this. Matter of fact, let me erase... To hide our vanishing point, so I'll erase this area right here for our first tree, and a little bit of this right here. So when you draw your trees and elevations and stuff like this, I like to sort of scribble them in. Just scribble them like that. Down here, he's going to come up, come out. Oh. Race our vanishing point or our horizon line here. We'll go ahead and race a little chunk of it over here for the last tree. Done? If you want to. Little scribbly trees. Yeah. They're like scribbly trees. We over here from this vanishing point. If we wanted to, while I'm looking at it, let's go this way and go here. And there you go. Here. What are you talking about? Let's see. That's pretty good. It's a hospital. Nice vanishing point. Yeah. So, a little critique. This corner should line up there to give you your bottom. Okay? Yeah. Very good, though. So how, so, how many vanishing points have you ever done? Zero. Zero? This is my first one. So that's Awesome. The first one is this one here, which is not that good. It's 3D. It's 3D? 3D. <laughs> it's just the 3D it's, it's 4D. One. This one I'll say is a vanishing point. So while I'm thinking about it, I'm going to go ahead and put in the train tracks. <laughs> hey, Dad. So, why did these type of drawings get the name vanishing point? Because they go back to a, They vanish. Everything vanishes back to a single point. Back in the distance. Hmm, that's cool. Very famous artist that So let's do this while I'm thinking about it. Let's go in here. We're gonna have another set of train tracks come out from behind this building. And cross the road. And then we're going to do this. We're going to tie them in with a curve and make a switch. This is really good. Freehand that in.
What's yours, Jay? Mine looks like this. Like, blended. There awesome. we go. Two point perspective. Um, also, real quick, let me let's move this over to the side. So, single point perspective, two point perspective, and then I'm going to draw a low horizon line. I'm going to show you guys very quickly. I'm going to show you three point perspective. So, once you got the idea of two point perspective, we'll put one way over here. We'll put another one way over here. And we're going to put a third one up here. So here's what's going to happen. So my third vanishing point, I'm going to put the corner. The building here. And line up with the vanishing point here. Here's the top of the head. So there's the corner of the building. Here's the bottom of the building. Now you guys can do this test if you want as well. You can go get uh, photographs, find photographs online of buildings, and you can figure out their vanishing points and how big they are. So, so with the third vanishing point, I'm going to come through and we're going to do like this. And put another spot over here, like this. top of the building over here so the whole point of doing the third vanishing point is you can make some very dynamic drawings I really feel like you're looking way up at this huge skyscraper see how it automatically goes to that third point at the same time it lines up here and it lines up here as well so you could come through and you could do a whole row of skyscrapers um, you could do this and then rough them out with like uh, rock formations like a Grand Canyon or a Mesa kind of thing but you can make sure your pers perspectives are all lined up so here's our building like this of course again you come through and do the um, do the doors and windows Or, um, even more interesting, with the vanishing point, you could make it look like um, stones. Again, this would take a little while. Probably help you meditate or concentrate while you did it. Make sure you're lined up on all your vanishing points. So you can make it look like brick. So you could actually draw this. This could be the um, Washington Monument. It'd have to be a lot, whole lot taller than what I've made. So I'm going to go ahead and put like a pyramid top on this. So with the pyramid top, to draw that angle in, you draw the point, you want to connect it down to there, and appearance. And then again, the vanishing point. Just draw a dragonfly going for a big. Oops, it's that and also remember these lines here. Um, when you go to do your stones, they're now lined up with this little vanishing point that's at the point of the top here. So there's the stones for that. Let me hold that up 
closer so you guys can see. So these lines that are here on the points, they go to this vanishing point, the point of the, uh, the tower, instead of our vanishing point up here that was our third point up there. So everything pulls into this to line up these stone marks. So again, you can have lots of fun with this. So, Meh, I drew your dragonfly. Very dragonfly nice. flower outside <laughs> with a flower that we have outside. Very I'm sure good. I can show you all it. But it's all right. Yep. Helicopter City. There we go. So there you are. Single point. Double and triple. One, two, and three. Hope you've enjoyed today's lesson. Um, be posting one here shortly. Next, we're going to do model railroading. So, we'll get into that here in a few minutes. But, I uh, hope you've enjoyed today's art lesson. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to, um, to post those in the comments below. And, um like to see your work so please feel free to share it otherwise thanks for watching have a great day Bye. take care